live from Utah's Hogle Zoo coming your way. Hey guys. Rally the troops, call the neighbors, get the kids. This is gonna be a good one. I'm gonna ease away. We're gonna be feeding. Oh, who doesn't love some animal feeding, right? We're gonna tell you more about this in just a second. Hi everyone, it's Brad here again from the marketing department. Welcome this Thursday uh, at, at 11.30. We're with you every day at this time with our Facebook field trips. I see some comments rolling in. Thank you very much. As always, we appreciate your donations. If you could uh, uh, find a way to help support your zoo with some donations, we'd sure appreciate it during this period of time when we're closed. Love to answer all your questions and uh, especially hear from children. Also, don't forget to share this content if you like what you're seeing. Very exciting. Today we're in my favorite building once again. It's the small animal building here at Hogel Zoo, and we're gonna be in the rainforest today, right in the heart of the building. And our special guest from the zoo's animal team is Britt. Britt, hi, how are you? I'm doing well, thank Great. you. Welcome yeah. to the rainforest, guys. I love the rainforest. What can our viewers expect to see today? Well, today we're gonna feed all of the birds in the rainforest, and we have an especially special treat. Um, our jungle fowl just had chicks, so they hatched about 12 days ago, so they're brand new, and they're really excited to eat. So I'm going to show you how we okay. feed them. Um, I'm actually going to ring a cowbell, and they'll come running up and take some insects. They eat a variety of foods, a lot of insects, grains, um, some greens, like, and carrots. They eat a lot of veggies and fruits. So if you guys are ready, Fantastic. I'll get started. Britt, we'll follow you. All right. We're going so to try to maintain. I'm just going to go behind you to grab the cowbell. Yeah. And the, okay. The here we go. Trying to maintain some yeah. social distance here among us all, as you can tell. The work that goes into preparing these diets, folks, is I mean just in, incredible. When you see this cart full of food. So if you guys want oh, to see. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! We have closer. some crickets and mealworms, and all of the birds love these. Now that's not an earthquake that's making these guys move. No, they are live. These crickets and the mealworms. They're the mealworms, folks. You can see them wiggling around in there. Provides uh, a lot uh, of good uh. protein for them. Boy, and it's lunchtime too, right? So yeah. that looks pretty good. All right, good. so I'm just going to walk up to that gate right there. Okay. I'm going to ring the cow bell, and hopefully they'll come running over. So should we uh, be looking this way? Yeah. Okay, there she goes. Hey oh, guys. look at them come. Do you see them, gang? Now, what, what birds are these? These are red, red jungle fowl. Red jungle fowl. Yes, and these are actually what domestic chickens originated from. Oh, I'll be darned. Yeah, so if they look very similar to chickens, that's because they are. Um, yeah. But you can tell that they're a little bit smaller than domestic chickens. Um, that's because they usually live in the wild and it makes it easier for them to hide in small spaces if they're being hunted by a predator or they just need to get away. Yeah, now is that dad right there looking over yes, things? Yes, that's, uh -huh. that's the father. This is mom right here below me. And the mom has been doing all the work. She takes care of, she takes care of the chicks. The dad is just kind of curious and hangs out with them Thank sometimes. Thank you, Mickey. So if you watch, You'll probably see her pick up some insects and actually hand it to the chicks. Thank you for your donations, everybody. That's so great. We so appreciate it. This is quite a vantage point I've got looking right down on these guys. So you can tell these guys are eating real well. Um, starting the first day, they started eating whatever mom handed uh -huh. to them. Um, they're already up and running around. And they're almost two weeks old. Around four weeks, they'll be fully feathered. And then around eight weeks, they'll start getting their adult feathers. Now, these jungle fowl, they're native to where? Um, South and Southeast Asia. Although they've been um, brought to different parts of the world, there are a lot in the Hawaii Islands. Oh, I see. Um, and some in the US as well. People do keep them at home. Now, it's Kiana's ninth birthday today. Happy birthday, Kiana. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. She wants to be an entomologist when she grows up. 
Nice. Happy birthday. How about that? I had no idea what an entomologist was when I was nine years old. <laughs> so if you guys notice, I actually rung a cowbell to signal to them that it was time to eat. And this is important because it helps us build up a trusting relationship with them. But it also helps, uh, helps us get a close look at them. Oh, sure. Um, so if they, know, if they know that this means the cowbell means food, then I can get a really good look at them every day, see how they're walking, make sure that they're eating well, that they're socializing with each other well, and make sure that they're growing up real healthy. Now, some folks have, have noticed that the male is actually quite beautiful. Yes. With his yep. plumage and so forth. Is that unique to... Uh... The jungle fowl or, or yeah, or... so the males are usually very vibrant. Um, is to help attract females during breeding season. Aha. Uh -huh. Now Morgan raises a good question here. Yes, buying a zoo membership will not just help some, but help a lot. It's one of the best ways, if not the best way, that you can support Hogle Zoo while we're closed. Go to hoglezoo.org and purchase or renew your zoo membership, gang. Thank you for that. And thank you for your donations. Just great. Would you guys like to see now, me feed the rest of the birds? Do these reproduce as quickly as the domesticated chickens, people are um, asking? So they lay about one egg a day when they're laying egg a clutch. Day. Um, and they'll incubate for about 21 days. So not too long. And then they come out looking almost just like they look right now, just a little smaller. We have a variety of birds. So we have rosette spoonbills, scarlet ibis. We have a pied imperial pigeon. We have speckled mouse birds um, and superb starlings. We have two rose ring parakeets, which are kind of hard to see sometimes, but I actually see the yellow one up in the canopy oh, oh, over there yeah, watching there us. Her name is this Amarilla. Right here. We also have a shell duck, a Raja shell duck, and a Canadian goose. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, we'll whenever you're ready, we'll just follow you. All right. Again, different diets for different birds. You got your meat eaters, True. you got your yeah. veg eaters, right? So I'm gonna start with feeding the grain and the produce eaters. You'll see we have a variety of grains in there. Um, we also have some hard boiled egg, we have some um, greens, veggies, and some fruit. So a good balanced diet. And yes, folks, Nash, you asked, we are going to have some more animal paintings. Go to the online store at hogelzoo.org and see what we have available. Right. So I'm going to kind of be going back and forth between okay. the two ponds. Okay. I'm going to put this one over here for the Now you see she placed this one over here. Now she's crossing over. There you go. This is for these guys. Party for the planet, gang. Yesterday was Earth Day. It's Earth Day week, all week long. Don't forget to take care of Mother Earth. There's plenty of information on the internet how you can help take care of the world we live in. So we have birds that are more ground dwelling, um, which is why I put some bulls on the ground. And then we have birds that like to stay more in the trees. Okay. So I, I hang these up. So you hang those up with them? Yep. They're more comfortable eating off the ground. Now Britt's going back for more more diet. It's tough to have her running around and keeping our six foot distance. And... All right. So if so, you want to see. I'm putting out some oh. meat for the meat eaters. So the rosette spoonbills and the scarlet ibis, they are mainly fish and meat eaters. I see. Um, so we have a, a mix of food in here. We have some salmon, we have capelin, we have um, a nutritious pellet just to kind of add to their diet. And we have some um, meat that is formulated just for birds of prey and meat eating birds. Now, a little six-year-old asked why you feed the birds hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> um, it adds some protein to their diet. 
and the calcium from the shell is actually really good for them. I'll be darned. Who knew, gang, right? You can send me, I, I want to make sure I get some good video of the birds. We have such beautiful birds in our rainforest. Yeah, and once we reopen, don't forget to come check out the rainforest. In the small animal building, it's easy to miss as you make your way through SAB because, you know, a lot of the animals are on the perimeter. So do make uh, an effort to cut through the rainforest and check out the wonderful collection of birds that we have. You can see Britt still right. putting out plenty of so diets. So I'm putting some pellets out right now for our Patagonian Conyers. Yeah, some parrot pellets. And these guys are actually actually burrowing parrots. You can see Rosie just kind of stuck her head out right there. We have a male and a female, Bandit and Rosie. And these are their little makeshift dens and burrows. And they will actually dig the dirt out of it and make their own little home in there. Uh, yeah, we're getting a lot of questions, folks, about when we're reopening, and we just don't know yet. But uh, believe me, once we have a date, we will blast it out there and let you all know. Thanks for asking. We're as anxious to see all of you as you are to uh, uh, visit the zoo. Yes, and, and this is all raw, right, huh, Brett? All, the, what was that? It's, it's raw. Nothing has been cooked. Right. Right? Right. The only thing that's been cooked are the eggs, the hard-boiled eggs. You're very welcome, Colette. Thank you very much for tuning in. Which, which one of this little guy here eat the lettuce? Um, that is a Raja shell duck. His name is actually Sheldon. Sheldon the shell duck. Sheldon the Her shell duck. Name. Yep. And you can see one of the spoon bills. The rosette spoonbills came down. Everybody's going to start coming down to eat now. Yeah, it's a rose ring parakeet. And our male, green, up there, he kind of blends in with the leaves real well. Um, will probably come down as well. We are staying safe. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Appreciate that. People, uh, people remember an iguana in here. Is the iguana still here? No. Um, he actually passed away a few years ago from old age. Passed away a few a long, years ago from old life. age. Okay. Good to know. All right, we want to talk a little bit about the importance of rainforest. Let's see. We can get Rory in here. There he comes. Yeah, let's... Let's do a little switcheroo. In the meantime, I want to remind everybody to go to hogazoo.org. Plenty of ways that you can donate and contribute. Purchasing a zoo membership, there's animal art illustrations for sale. There's actual art made by our animals on our online store. We also have some exciting virtual tours coming up starting Sunday that you'll want to check out. Those are with a small fee, but again, all the money goes to benefit Utah's Hogle Zoo. All right, this is Rory. He's our grounds supervisor. Yes. And Hello, uh, all. Yeah, absolutely. welcome, Rory. <laughs> this is your first Facebook Live. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you being here. Now, uh, we thought it would be a good idea, since we're in the rainforest, to talk about rainforests and how they're disappearing around the world. And, and why is that? What's happening to the rainforests in South America and in Africa and Indonesia? Well, a lot of it um, is human impact. Uh, people, people need places to farm, and unfortunately, with a lot of the unsustainable practices that are still being carried out with farming, they're just cutting down and burning the forests and then uh, planting in that soil. But what they don't understand is that the soils deplete really quickly in, in the rainforest environments. They rely so heavily on the leaves, you know, coming down and, and then de decomposing on the forest floor. That's what really has built up that layer of fertility that they're counting on to raise their crops. And you take that forest away and uh, even burn it, and that's just going to take away the, the nutrients that they're trying to tap there. So there are a lot of efforts to educate farmers 
uh, throughout the world on more sustainable practices for fertilization. Um, here in the United States, they're, they're working on some no-tilling uh, agriculture where instead of doing, you know, rows of crops that they have to uh, till up every year, they can actually plant right into the, the old uh, crop left over. Um, but yeah, back to rainforests, you know, some of these techniques could be used in a, in a setting like this. Um, there's also uh, some work being done in under canopy agriculture, where a lot of the cash crops that they grow um, can actually survive underneath a canopy like this in partial sunlight. Um, and those are, those are some of the efforts that we're, we're trying to support, like at Garangosa National Park with the coffee production. Um, you wouldn't think of it necessarily, but uh, coffee is a plant that can grow in the understory of a rainforest. Now, in the rainforest, you have the canopy, and that's going to be these huge trees, like we have these, these big ficus trees that are kind of our, uh -huh. uh, our mimic uh, canopy trees, and then you're going to have the understory trees, and we have some smaller ficus trees, uh, a few dracaenas, uh, some fiddle leaf fig, uh, Norfolk pines, and some princess ferns. Um, they're, they're all going to be in the understory. And then below that is going to be the ground level. Now, our, our rainforest is pretty representative of an actual ground level of a rainforest. Um, so, not so much light gets down there, and so there's going to be um, a lot of vines, a lot of uh, spreading plants, and also a lot of, uh, a lot of bare ground, um, just with leaf litter and, and that. So this, this entire biome is just a really good, uh, really good area for a broad diversity of life to exist um, in benevolent competition because, of course, all the plants are competing for sunlight. All of the um, insects, all of the birds, all the mammals, um, they're all competing for nutrients as well. So it's really kind of fun. Um, and this, this rainforest is is a unique challenge in a couple of ways. Uh -huh. yeah, I was going to so. ask you what it takes <laughs> to take care of our little corner of the world here in the SAB. Yeah, yeah. So these, these plants are not just the, the furniture and the lifescape of these birds. They're also the playthings. Oh. So what, one of the things that we, that we find is that the birds will interact with these, these plants, sometimes in a destructive way. And we just kind of have to roll with it because this is their home. And hey, you know, if the kids decide to get out and wreck the living room, well, that's OK. That's, that's what they do. So um, a lot of times we have to replace plants. Um, there have been individuals over the years that actually donate plants to us. And we love you know, those contributions. We, we welcome them. Um, and we also acknowledge that sometimes, you know, the birds are going to are going to be aggressive toward a plant and say, "Hey, I love this this material. I'm going to make a nest out of it. I'm going to grab all of this stuff that I can and hey, make a make a nest lining." So you know, we can't necessarily um, say no, no, our rainforest pristine and perfect just because of that. Um, and we love it because the more plants that we have in here. The more natural behaviors we can we can uh, observe, uh -huh. um, the healthier the, the birds' sociality tends to be. Well, I think I'm not an animal person. You want to nod your head, Britt? Is is that accurate? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's one of the challenges. Also, we do have it in an enclosed area, so we have to use as many organic fertilizers as we can. And then whenever there's you know, invertebrate pests or diseases that come in, we have to be really careful about how we treat those. You know, we have to be careful that it's not going to be something that will adversely affect the birds. Um, and so we, we use all of our stuff as organic. We use a lot of uh, composted things to help build up our soil. Um, we use, um, well, what we use for our, our invertebrate control right now is a product called neem oil. That's N-E-E-M. It's derived from the neem tree. And uh, so we're able to actually apply that on our foliage to help keep down things like scale 
and uh, mealybug, mites, and also some of the diseases that we kind of that we can get, like funguses or uh, rusts. Now, Rory, some people are asking how old these trees are. Are they as old as the building? Do you know? So, these trees, I, I honestly don't know. Um, these trees have been here longer than I've probably been alive. So, 40 plus years. And they, they're all pruned. They've been pruned so they, they stay within the space. Um, naturally, a tree would just grow right out of this building. These yeah. trees would be, you know, 70 feet tall. So, do you have to climb up them and prune them from the top with a lift of some kind, or? Um, we, we do have the option of giving a scissor lift in this space. Right now, the way we try to prune it is with ladders and long poles with saws or, or clippers on the, on the end. Um, and we just have to, we have to be really careful when we prune to make sure it doesn't disturb the birds too much, to try and be aware of um, where any nests might be. Oh. So that we don't, you know, get into those nesting areas and disturb their, their behavior. And, and that's a great tip for our viewers to do the same when they're out pruning their trees or exactly. shrubbery. To remember, be ever mindful that there could be a nest. Right, there. yeah. I know I've come across some nests with even eggs in it, and boy, I'm like, oh, I'm going to stay away from this for a little while then. And, and so, yeah, and that's great. Uh, moms and dads, take your kids around the neighborhood, and uh, this time of year... You'll see nests up in trees, so look high, look low, look for those nests, but just remember, please don't disturb them at all at any time. That's right. Uh, That's well, right. This, is a beautiful, uh, this is a beautiful part of Hogel Zoo. It always has been. Small animal building is 45 plus years old. She's holding up well. She's doing the job. <laughs> As I mentioned, my favorite building here at the zoo, but it does take a lot of upkeep and care, and that certainly applies to where we are today in the rainforest. Rory, thanks for your time. Yeah. Again, a um, lot of information on the Internet about rainforests and what you guys can do to help. Britt, thank you very much for your wonderful knowledge about the birds and the diets and what it takes to take care of our avian friends. I got a lot of questions from people asking to see the tortoises, so I showed them. We love the tortoises. They're right over there. I'm going to go back to them as I, uh, as I move to end this Facebook Live. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. You guys are the best. Couldn't do it without you. We'll be back tomorrow at 1130 for another Facebook Live. Please join us then. And always remember to be a champion for wildlife in all you do. We sure appreciate you guys. Stay safe. Be well. Take care now.